I like the idea that the world is coming apart at the seams. In brokenness or in, in um, abyssal thinking or in fissures, that's where the action is. So thank goodness the world is falling apart. Now the new can come up. There's a dark kind of space that attracts me artistically, a space that eludes meaning or a space like an abyss. I had heard about Rwanda in 94, but had no access to it. It was too much, too big, a million people in a hundred days. I couldn't get my head around it. Then I read an article about two nuns, two Catholic nuns who were on trial in Belgium for participating in genocide. The specificity of that turned it from a million people to two people. That story gave me questions to ask uh, that uh, I had been unable to frame previously. So I went to their trial in Belgium and in for a penny, in for a pound. Having gone to that trial, I, I decided to go to Rwanda. I wanted to write about Rwanda. I felt a heavy responsibility in trying to write that play. So I made a bargain with God that if you let me draft this play, if you, let me, uh, uh, if you give me a way to attempt this play, I will change my life. I was um, able to write the play, whether it works or not, I don't know, but I, I was able to get it out of me in repayment I've attempted to change my life. So I went back uh, eight summers subsequent to that, uh, each time bringing people with me to share in the experience, to look at how culture is working in a landscape of recovery. Silence has since become the essential aspect of my relationship to Rwanda, and I will say my relationship to writing in general. Silence is now at the heart of my pedagogy. Silence not in the sense of a numbing down or a withholding, but silence in the sense of uh, readiness. We spent time with victims and perpetrators both. My job isn't to report on them or certainly not to tell them what they feel. My job is really to give them space. My incapacity becomes my resource. And that's really what I see a play as being. A period of problem or damage into which an audience can flow, room, room for an audience uh, to name themselves in. Brown is a great place to come to in terms of uh, um, fruitful not knowing. There is a broad and unmoderated array of deep resources. So I'm able to discover an interest and find the resources to um, uh, sharpen my questions. Daily at Brown, I'm invited to pull things together across disciplines and administrations and personalities, things that haven't been brought together before to uh, ask a brand new question, new for myself and hopefully new for the community. Teaching is about um, guiding, guiding through not knowing and through the, the gravity of one's questions, you, you hopefully allow students to fall forward. The beauty of teaching at Brown is that it's a school with a, an articulated philosophy in it, a reason for being, and its reason for being seems to be centered very accurately on this idea of a new curriculum. A reason why it has survived or exploded as it has is for the same reasons that TV or the internet exploded, a cultural moment that wanted this thing. The world wanted this sense of um, conversation and network and availability. I would say the new curriculum was less made up or introduced than it was precipitated, that it was there and Brown uh, gave it occasion for uh, manifesting. Much as Brown's identity is very sound and uh, well attired in, in the new curriculum, it's always building. It's building uh, uh, physical facilities. It's straining to hire faculty, but uh, more than anything, it's building heart and mind. 